On behalf of organizer, I welcome the lecturer staff of Medical Relation Program, ladies and gentlemen, to the Medical Relation Alumni Talk 2022. Mencari timba si anak dara di bawah sarang burung tempur. Sembah, salam sembah membuka bicara, selamat datang untuk semua. Yang bersaha Profesor Dr. Wan Rosniwan Ishak, Dean of School of Health Sciences. Yang bersaha Profesor Yang bersaha Dr. Mak Khairul Azhar Abdul Razak, Chairman of Medical Relation Program. Yang berbahagia Mr. Rinadi Rizyat, Mr. Speaker, Consultant RTO and Manager of Alip Sendian Berhad, Lecturers, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Medical Relation Alumni Talk 2022. Alhamdulillah, with all our grace, we come together today to make this meaningful program a success. Welcome and many thanks to all the attendees, especially to the invited guests for taking the time to attend this event. With due respect, I call upon Mr. Muhammad Haikar Amli to recite the dua. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> اللهم إنك طلق العظيم إنك السميع العليم إنك غفور الرحيم إنك رب العرش العظيم إنك البر الجواد الكريم يا الله أنت الله يمكن أن يسجى لك بجيان أنت الله يمكن أن يسجى لك بجيان أنت الله يمكن أن يسجى لك شكراً أنت الله يمكن أن يسجى لك مريتهم في تنعم أنت وسجى لك بجيان كبر أنت الله كم بالي سجى لك أوسان اللهم أنت رب لا إله إلا أنت ولك تني وعن Allahumma ya karim ya, ya rahim Cetiriah rahmat dan rahimmu ke atas majlis Program Medical Radiation Alumni Talk 2022 Yang diadakan pada hari ini Berkatilah ia dari awal hingga akhirnya Ya fa'alun lima yurid Kami juga memohon perlindungan daripadamu Dari segala perkara yang boleh mencacat celakan majlis kami Dan daripada segala perkara yang melalaikan kami Dari berbuat ta'ak kepadamu Kepadamu jua kami serah segala urusan kami Rabbana alaika tawakkalna wa alaika anabna wa alaika al-masir Rabbana alatina fi dunia hasanah Wa fil akhirati hasanah tawakkalna azab al-nab Wa sallallahu ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa alhamdulillahi wa bil alamin Amin amin ya rabbal alamin Thank you for the dua and citation Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado Please give your hand to Dr. Muhammad Khairul Azhar Abdul Razak to give his welcoming speech. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning. So uh, I would like to appreciate to our team, School of Health Science, Professor Dr. Waros Lee, for his time uh, for our event today. And I would like to appreciate the lecturers and also the staff for your support. And um, not to forget our beloved students, thank you for your participation. Um, I also would like to appreciate to our invited speaker, Mr. Rinadi Rifiat. Actually, Mr. Rinadi is uh, one of our alumni, which is a uh, batch three, and now he's a uh, uh, radiation protection officer in uh, Alpi Sundar Berhad. So, as we know, um, our program not only produce medical physicists, uh, our mainstream is also produce radiation protection officer. Uh, in my knowledge. Radiation protection officer, the career is become become expand in industry and also the health institution. So uh, we also uh, engage with the act, which is Act three hundred four, uh, that required the RPO. So any industries that 
had the radiation based instrument or maybe deal with radioactive source uh, either is uh, silk source or unsilk source they need the RTO so this is the important uh, prospect that we need to see uh, not only for medical physicists so for today uh, we bring Mr. Rinaldi from Alpis and Rambrahat he also the industry community advisory panel appointed by our vice chancellor and from his experience I hope that you all can get the benefits, tips, and maybe some information how to be the RPO and how the medical radiation get involved in this uh, career. So um, I hope that you enjoy this event. And I also hope that this event will be uh, two ways communication. We also provide the Q&A uh, session. Uh, please ask anything that you that you need to know from our respected speaker. Uh, so I think that's all from me. So enjoy your uh, enjoy your uh, this event, this alumni talk. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad Khairul Abdul. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad Khairul Azhar. Next, we are pleased to invite Yang Tusaha Professor Dr. Waros Liwan Isha to deliver his message and officiate the ceremony today. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Terima kasih pengacara majlis. Pengusi rancangan, Dr. Saib Azhar. Uh, most important person here is Siti uh, Asya and also not forgetting Mr. Rinaldi. Thank you very much uh, willing to come to again uh, back to campus. Huh? Welcome back. And then of course the most important uh, person here uh, the technical uh, <coughs> the ahli jawatan kuasa huh? penganju and also not forgetting student. Huh? Third year specifically and fourth year. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Uh, first of all uh, I take this opportunity uh, to be here with all of you, pioneers and family members of the School of the Health Sciences since its common commencement in 2001 and uh, accreditation in 2004. The medical uh, medical radiation program has produced, I think, more than uh, 500 students, alumni already. So you have uh, your seniors, eh, alumni, which is uh, can be, uh, you know, the source of information for you guys to know about the uh, specifically on the medical radiation program and also the opportunity for the career later on yeah and then um uh, now working in various you know, your alumni your seniors in uh, various governmental and private medical radiation services will be linked the national requirement requirement of trained personnel uh, this year is our 17 batch and will be continued the legacy fired out fired up by our former dean, the second dean of School of Health Sciences, which is Professor Dato Dr. Ahmad Zakir. And also not forgetting the late of our first dean, which is uh, Professor Dr. Zainul Fazruddin Zainuddin. So these two person are very important which initiate the medical radiation. And then um, Mantan Dekan, the former dean, that Prof. Dato Dr. Ahmad Zakir, who created who designed the curriculum, then you are here today. If not without their contribution, you are not here. And then the, pro the program doesn't exist until now. So you have to acknowledge this two percent, eh? Prof. Dato Dr. Ahmad Zakaria, the second, uh, the formal dean, and also the lead of the first dean, which was Dr. Professor Dr. Uh, Zainul Fazruddin Zainuddin. Today's event not only marks the continuation of the medical radiation talk held in 2019, but also marked the first time in that all medical radiation staff, students and alumni are able to gather together, taking part in this hybrid and also online event. I thank the organizing team, I was uh, SK alumni committee in initiating and putting a lot of effort to make this medical radiation alumni talk a reality. 
This has been an eagerly awaited event linking our current students and alumni in a networking and also guidance platform for medical radiation program improvement and career progression. I am also honored that our former dean, uh, Prof. Dr. Dr. Ahmad Zagra, is with us. She is supposed to be here, I think. Uh, witnesses the fruits of his labor. Without him and our late Prof. Dr. Zainul Faziruddin, Zainuddin efforts in establishing this course are a viable, sustainable, and crucial help science profession. Society would not have known or understood about the application of medical radiation, both in the concept of sejahtera in health and well-being, which is uh, very relevant to SDG number three, which is focusing or addressing good health and well-being. I dearly hope that this event like this will continue the least to provide input and job opportunity for our medical radiation graduates. I appreciate our alumni, Mr. Rinaldi, once again, thank you very much for your willingness to come here from KL, just to be here with us and sharing his working experience. Thank you again for accepting our invitation and we hope this uh, knowledge sharing event will be uh, will benefit, benefit all of us. I take this opportunity to advise students and alumni to do something simple that is small effort but able to make a big impact remember you just do a small effort but don't be surprised you will really be see the big impact doing small thing for big impact just remember that okay we have graduated more than 500 students already in medical radiation field okay for example just imagine, just imagine now. For each alumni, assuming that 80% contribute from more than 500, 80% means around 400. 400 students contribute only one ringgit a day to the alumni, what we call tabung alumni or any kind of platform. You can create cloud or whatsoever. One ringgit a day, imagine, yeah? Consistently for 15 years, we can have 70 years graduate, 70 uh, uh, batch of graduate already. 15 years, uh, one five years. Consistently, one ringgit a day, 400 students, which is our, our alumni. We have actually been able to collect as much as around ballpark figure, 2 million a day. After 15 years, we have actually been able to collect around ballpark figure, 2 million ringgit. Of this amount, we are able to plan and implement various activities involving alumni and students of medical radiation program. Try to imagine how many more P40 students can be sponsored from the, from this to contribute to continue their study and, and for at the level of MSc and PhD. That is, you know, the most important thing is. I think you guys, after you are you graduated, you don't remember the course content that you have studied, you have learned, but you cannot remember your plan. Okay, after 17 years, Mr. Rinan is still no, he's still Asha, Saga Asha, and also his colleague, but some of the content he forgot already. Okay, so that is the small impact. Please be together. Be alumni of, you know, you know, you are going to become an alumnus later on. So be active in the society, in the medical radiation society, and also uh, please cohesively, you know, working together to create an impact. Do small things, but you should be able to create a big impact. Alumni are also advised to always provide response feedback related to the curriculum to be improved according to the current needs. For example, the integration of artificial intelligence, for example, machine learning uh, in the, the treatment plan and so on. The continuous involvement of alumni in the curriculum review and strengthening the course content also important to ensure the sustainability of this program, to make the medical radiation program a program that not only important, but also very relevant to the community and also to the nation. So please remember this advice. And then I guess uh, all the alumni 
Dr. Uh, Mr. Renadi and the colleagues, please tell us what actually the needs uh, when you in the environment, in the working environment, you know already whether our curriculum post contact is still relevant. If not, just do uh, what we call uh, revision. Please, Dr. Dr. Ahmad Zakaria, the second former dean. Yeah? So, thank you very much, Dr. for your presence. So, we have to give applause to Dr. Yeah? <laughs> We are very honored to have that to be one of the pioneers to make the program, this uh, medical relation, a uh, successful program and very valuable program to the country. So, without the effort, continual effort by our former dean, Dr. Ahmad, you are not here today. That is the impact. So, again, please think about the impact because what I have. Uh, told you just now, this is the idea from coming from uh, Dr. Ahmad Zakaria. Just remember, that just one ringgit from seafood every day, then you can make a big impact to the society, inshallah. Without further ado, I think, uh, uh, again, I would like to thank Mr. Rinaldi for your presence to share with us. So please make uh, this opportunity to, call, to uh, uh, communicate rightly, communicate with Mr. Rinaldi uh, to, uh, for his experience in the working, uh, uh, in the working um, setting. Yeah. So without further ado, I uh, appreciate the medical radiation on the night talk for 2020. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum Ladies and gentlemen, before inviting our speaker for today, let me introduce a little bit about Mr. Rinaldi Rifiyad. He is an alumni of Medical Relation Program, graduated in 2006. He is a consultant RPO and manager of medical physics at Alex Berhad in Selangor. He is certified by HDR, HRD Corp in Ministry of Human Resource, Malaysia Training and Training Program in Training and Development Program for RPO accreditation in Malaysia. From 2007 until now, he has completed professional RPO courses such as Combined Safety, Phenom RPO, Safety and Working Procedure, Safety Control Against Radiation Hazard, RPO Industry Level 3, Radio Biological Safety, Radiation Safety and Emergency Procedures, and Working with Industrial Radiation Gauge. With these experiences, Mr. Rinaldi recently received an opportunity as an Industry Community Advisory ICAC panel member for the medical relation program appointed by Vice Chancellor of USN. With all due respect, let us invite Mr. Rinali Rifia to the stage to present his talk entitled Involvement of Medical Relation Alumni as RPO. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Okay. It's quite interesting eh? because today I have been opportunity to talk uh, for the brothers and sisters. Okay. And then quite worried juga lah because my ex lecturer, okay, Dr. Ahmad Zakaria, also in front of me now because last time I've been here during my Bible. Okay. <laughs> During my Bible, then now I come again just to to share some experience with all the brother and sisters. Okay, so first of all, thanks again to the Secretariat, okay, especially uh, Dr. Kai and team to inviting me to give some opportunity uh, to share our experience. Lah. Okay. I know that you all have been concerned on the medical sector almost 17 years. Okay. That's good one. Yeah. Eh? That one is good. <clears throat> but then uh, we need to see what else that we from the medical radiation student can be uh, what we call the supportive our uh, the environment outside there. Okay, because I'm sure that all your lecturers and your science officer also have give some info 
about the how strong or how cruel the world is outside there. Okay. Because as we know, you as a medical radiation student, uh, basically what we are thinking that after we complete grad and we get our scroll, then we actually can contribute to the medical sector, especially as a medical physicist. But this one is not totally wrong. But somehow the demand is outside there is put something that you need to further study on your master students. This is what I've been taught before. But I'm here today to share what is your capability from the degree level, okay, in terms to synchronize with the environment in order to have your opportunity to give some service on the private and government sector okay so i have been uh, given uh, two topics but somehow this topic like hair wire for me okay because basically i'm uh, involved in uh, giving some this kind of speech but this is my first time using the microphone okay before this <clears throat> uh, we attending uh, what we call uh, even more than crowd like this okay but i prefer to to with to give some speech without a microphone because i think my 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 voice is quite clear eh? but it's okay uh, so i can put aside uh, uh, my what we call because microphone is during the karaoke time uh, okay uh, so this morning just chill uh, brother and sisters and also my former team members here lah. Okay, so okay. Okay. Uh, before we get the the slide presentation is ready, so can I ask one question before we continue? Okay who are attending eh, this morning that you have the clear picture what you want to be after this please discuss on the radiation field eh, only i don't think you want to say that i want to be a cab driver okay i want to be an entrepreneur it's okay fine that's you but when we talk about want to give the some concern on medical radiation you need to find your market niche Okay, your market niche. What is your relevant? Okay, what is your uh, degree relevant to the during the outside? Okay, macam mana you all nak menggunakan uh, degree yang ada ni untuk establish uh, as a successful medical radiation student. This one contribute ataupun uh, you all from uh, best 17, best 18. Best? Tak tahu. Okay. Bila orang tanya saya pun, saya pun tak tahu saya best mana. Dia cakap third best. Okay, fine. I'm third best. <laughs> ah, jangan panggil abang. <laughs> okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, now, uh, before we understanding eh, the market niche, I would like to uh to share about something that all the medical radiation that before my time i'm very what we got kita tak kita kurang menggunakan masa untuk buat some study because that time we are very uh, young age like you all but at that time the source is very minimum the source is very minimum we know that at that time we can be a global sign anything related to the uh, medical uh, sector okay and then now we see that there are some opportunity okay that uh, we can involve in the industry also okay uh, next so now this is you okay may uh, they call it as medical radiation eh? medical radiation PPSK okay USM Kubang Kerian uh, like uh, your dean say just now 
Okay. Estimation plus minus 500 have been supplied to the uh, environment, the Malaysia business environment lah, including uh, what we call uh, government sector, private sector, okay, your own sector, okay, doesn't matter. But now, this 500, okay, how much that people from your side has contributed to the government sector? Because we must know that I'm not saying that we need to compete to other university. No, because when you are dealing with the industry, it's based on your your uh, what we call your caliber, your capability, your caliber. Okay, to convince the company or to convince the uh, company to take you lah, to join. And then okay, so. Before. So, you need to know what is your demand. Okay? Macam kita tahulah. Medical radiation. Theoretically demanding on the medical sector. Okay? Theoretically demanding on the medical sector only. But, please, don't limit yourself. Okay? Don't limit yourself. Because, the world is outside there. Okay? There are... I think our best also, okay, from the medical relation, there are a lot of people that are successful, okay, even though in the overseas, Singapore, okay, in Australia, we have our, uh, what we call, uh, batch, okay, they are working, okay, but then almost more on the medical sector, okay, especially in radiotherapy, okay, so this is what I'm thinking about, okay, this is demand because once you grab, once you get the, your scroll, you is belongs to the public. But which public want you? That's the question. Be. Siapa yang nak awak? Kan? Saya tengok sini ramai adik-adik wanita. Lelaki tak ramai. Ha? Jadi dalam bidang radiation, there are some, this is the nature is outside there. Eh? Yang mana yang some company, they have a double standard. This is what happened outside there. Okay. They say that when we take a woman as a workers, cuti bersalin tiga bulan, working will be limited. So, this is a uh, chances to the men actually. But somehow, ada juga company yang say no. The good organization, even though you are on MC, on, on leave or whatever, there will be another person to take the process. That's the good organization. Okay. Uh, this some sharing session lah for you. Okay. Okay, pass. Dia jadi slow kan macam mana ni? Dia hang. Okay. If you see at the bottom one, we put as a radiation protection officer. Okay. Let me discuss a little bit about RPO eh? because previously, yes, during my time also, we have been noticed that what is the RPO is, okay? Because last time, before all this, uh, the, uh, your own lecture, because all, during my time, we pinjam lecture. I'm not sure because that time Prof. Aziz also come and then Prof. Fikri, okay, from Penang, okay? From there, we, uh, and then Prof. Ahmad pun also have share about this, the opportunity. Okay. Uh, jadi dalam bidang RPO, as I say, RPO is a, what have been stated in Act 304. You tahu kan? Dah belajar lah. Saya rasa Dr. Fahmi eh, yang ajar radiation protection. Yes. So, Dr. Fahmi tak ada dengan kita. Jadi, Act 304 is the only act, okay, that spell out about the activity on the radioactive, the radiating apparatus, anything that we call it as a radiation, okay. I'm not here to teach you about the radiation, okay. I'm just come to drive you all how to be or how to grab the opportunity that is open outside there. Okay. okay, RPO, something special, you are the teacher, sign officer, QA tester, says, 
sales pun memang ada. Okay, because what? When people involved in the sales, especially irradiating apparatus or anything related to the radiation element, the act say that the pemegang lesen should have the PPS, Pegawai Perlindungan Sinaran. Who is PPS or RPO? So RPO, salah satu tanggungjawab dia adalah menjalankan kerja-kerja dan juga menjadi pemudah cara kepada antara pihak LPTA ataupun authority with the working environment. This is a, what we call layman term lah. They have their own words. Okay, but I'm not here to 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 read one by one. Okay, to your understanding, we as RPO, as a moderator, okay, we call it as a moderator to enhance, to smooth the process. Okay, because all your info, okay, radiation eh, in Malaysia, we also have been noticed as a role model eh, to come uh, country like Brunei, Indonesia, eh, also like Alif, uh, for uh, additional, eh, the company's uh, sounds is not Alpis, it's okay, it's okay, okay, we call it as Alif, A, the pronunciation is A-L-I-F, eh? but due to the some uh, complication during the registration, okay, web address or whatever, they come up with some catchy word we call Alif, A-L-Y-P-Z. Okay, so now we have also uh, Middle East eh, from Saudi and Kuwait which are looking to this kind of businesses. Okay, because Alif also have a company eh, in the Kuwait doing the oil and gas. Okay, RPO is need to help this kind of environment. I will uh, touch this on my next uh, slide. Okay, this is two Okay, one is the X304 and then satu lagi adalah kita panggil lemtek, eh? lembaran teknikal. Lembaran teknikal, kalau tengok di sini saya makan apa? Eh? Saya makan tiga. Okay, ada saya makan tujuh berkaitan dengan dia letters. Tapi apa yang kita nak bagi tahu? This kind of document you can download free ya eh? dekat website ALB. Okay, this is how you want to be a RPO. Okay, what is the SOP? What kind of the syllabus? Because what? Because kenapa saya dipanggil ataupun saya yang nak minta untuk bagi this kind of slot? Because what you have learned in your radiation protection is actually stated in the syllabus RPO. Some kind, kalau kita tak guna syllabus tu secara betul, Dia akan jadi macam you terpaksa belajar dua kali. Satu belajar dekat universiti, satu lagi kita terpaksa belajar pula dekat uh, training provider, certified training provider. Okay, because saya pernah ada subjek RBO. Yes, we touch everything, transportation, but uh, less in the some uh, what we call not seriously on the isotop lah. I think that my time lah. Huh? Uh, tapi now. Uh, I think based on the syllabus that uh, I go through, I tanya, tanya dengan some of my friend here. So your syllabus is actually on that kind of level, okay? So but because uh, this because uh, Alif is one of the training provider for RPO. This is one thing. Apa yang kita tengok dia pada kita punya student, we call. Walaupun yang tua tua datang tu 40, 50 pun datang. This kind of student, the possibility chances to get uh, pass uh, is comparable dengan you yang fresh grad. Fresh grad is one time saja make exam. This is based on our experience because we have trained almost uh, 100 students uh, since last two years or three years. Okay. Dan kita dapati pelajar, uh, kita punya participant uh, yang yang age ni one time saja make exam. Because you have the basic. You have the strong. You orang kata apa kalau Orang kata kalau orang Islam ni dia iman dia kuat kat situ. Dia kuat dah kat situ. Ha? Your base is very strong. Okay. Cuma you a little bit more strongest in the medical sector. Okay. So ini yang diberitahu di dalam Akta 304 dengan uh, apa ni kita panggil Lemtech. Okay. 44 tadi. Okay. Apa yang disarankan kepada kita? 
Ini bukan saya suruh. Government yang suruh. Okay. So pengawal perlindungan sinaran. Seorang yang berwibawa dari dilantik orang pemegang lesen yang diluluskan oleh lembaga memakai peraturan dalam keadaan tajam sinaran yang bersesuaian. You tengok dari segi pemegang lesen yang dikeluarkan oleh Akta 304. Okay. Dan disebut kalau slide selepas ini pemegang lesen hendaklah hendaklah ha? kalau kita dia dengan lawyer punya spell out ni dia apa yang dia sebut lah ha? kalau mas ataupun uh, some wording dia tu lah ha? so pemegang lesen hendaklah mengambil kerja seorang pegawai perlindungan sinaran pemegang lesen as per stated in the 304 pegawai perlindungan sinaran juga disebut jadi menjadi kewajipan Okay. Sebab apa? Di luar sana menjadi salah satu kesalahan mandatory untuk mana-mana syarikat beroperasi okay, tanpa ada RPO yang sah. Okay. Di, kalau boleh dia minta macam orang kata apa, diberhentikan seketika operasi. Okay. There are some uh, what we call mandatory ya yeah, ataupun penalti untuk each company yang mana berurusan dengan radiation. Because radiation is everywhere. Uh, this is some sort yang selalu saya bagi tahu lah. Huh? Uh, macam you all sekarang ni pun cahaya lampu pun radiation juga. Yeah. But you more concern on the ionizing radiation. Okay, next. Jadi dalam lemtek tu tadi dia dah bagi tahu sesiapa yang berminat, okay you boleh ambil exam. Okay. Doesn't mean yang you dah belajar, you can consider. Ah, Saya dah menduduki latihan. So, saya nak duduk exam. No. Pusat latihan certified ataupun certified training provider sahaja yang dibenarkan untuk mengeluarkan sijil kehadiran tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Your brother and sisters. Okay. Only the trainer provider can issue a certified uh, attendance uh, certificate. Okay. You all patut beruntung sebab zaman saya dulu exam kena bayar. Kos dah kena bayar. Exam kena bayar. Fail pun kena bayar. Eh? Jadi betapa orang kata apa more struggle lah. Just to share, I'm not the first time punya exam. Lah. Bukan Saya bukan first time ambil perlu lulus. Because saya dah kerja dulu. Most uh, two years or three years. And then baru saya ambil RPO. Itu pun fail. Okay. So now, just to share, you all have the some what we call the knowledge or your uh, input still fresh. So, uh, try to discuss. Okay. With it, this is a, a additional for you or not. Okay. Jadi, dalam untuk meneduki peperiksaan lah. Soalan dia tak susah sebenarnya. Sebab soalan dia bermain-main macam tu je. Dia berpusing-pusing. Okay. But now the currently the uh, what we call the courses you need to pay. Okay. It's about 2.6k lah. If I'm not mistaken. And then uh, the exam is free. The exam is free. Okay. Itu untuk maklumat lah kepada siapa yang uh, you are thinking that you are able to give some services on the uh, radiation protection officer. Okay. Next. Okay. This is what I want to share about the latest update about the RPO. Ini kira first lah. Um, saya tak tahu sama ada your lecturer ataupun your sign officer ada tak share isu radiation protection. Currently, the RPO is only uh, consists of the industrial level. But this year, there are some we call it super keliling, if I'm not mistaken. They say that they will be coming out the RPO in the medical sector, which is they still ah, uh, kata still in process. Jadi saya tak tahu because Uh, RPO yang, yang akan dibuat oleh pihak KKM ni is under BKRP Badan Kawasan Selia Radiasi Perubatan lah. okay. Because previously 
uh, kita panggil on ALB ya lembaga pelaksanaan tenaga atom ataupun uh, atomic energy uh, ALB ya <coughs> telah mengeluarkan some uh, spell out about how to get di uh, macam mana peperiksaan itu dibuat. Okay, kalau you tengok dekat sini, dia ada industry and medical. Which is industry, we have uh, this kind of level lah. Kategori 1, kategori 2, kategori 3. Okay, which is it depends to the D level. Uh, so you all, I'm not sure whether you have go through the D level lah. Because the head, the panggil uh, hazard of the element. And then we also have the letters based on the cleaning uh, on medical. They have a category one, two, three, which is divided into your uh, X-ray department, which is diagnostic, and then nuclear medicine, and also uh, radiotherapy. But I'm not sure because I'm not. Saya cakap senang cakap benda ni masih lagi dalam bersurat lah. Saya tak tahu macam mana polisi apa semua saya tak tahu. Cuma dalam industri, insyaallah saya akan berkongsi. Okay, I will share about the sum introduction. Okay. Okay, next. Okay. So, normally, okay, if you are able to join the RPSO courses, okay, there are some sort of uh, train, training provider uh, yang menyediakan uh, RPO courses dekat luar sana. Banyak sebenarnya. Dalam lapan kalau tak silap saya. Okay, we have Alif itself. Kita ada Malaysia Nuclear Agency and then kita have some uh, Bangire uh, and then so on. Okay, ini yang very familiar. Uh. Dan untuk join this uh, courses, you must pass at least, if I'm not mistaken, 70% attendance. You tak boleh bonteng lah. Okay, uh, so you need to nego with the trainer training provider lah. Macam mana you nak come with the 100% attendance list because you pay for it. Okay. But that one need to discuss after this. But when we dealing with the RPO courses, okay, all you learn, okay, the first seven, I think seven day, eh, the first seven day is basically what you have learned here. Okay, about the uh, isotope, about the uh, uh, radiation protection and how to manage the safety Okay, and security, and you ada kan? Security kan? Safety ada kan? Ha, mesti ada. Okay, jadi perkara-perkara ini lah yang dibuat balik dalam tujuh hari, enam hari tu. Okay, and then the rest two is the additional courses which is belongs to your category. Kalau you come to the uh, courses for the category tiga, okay, so you akan learn um, more about category tiga. Okay. If kategori satu, you akan more to the irradiator. Irredit, okay. For your info, brachytherapy yang ada dekat hospital tu is under kategori satu. Walaupun dia nampak kecil. Okay. Irradiator is kategori satu. And kategori dua is something special. Which is you need to go through MLVK punya courses. The one is a, pernah dengar? NDT. Okay. NDT ni kalau kita cerita dekat zaman student ni. Kalau dia nak tahu duit je. Eh? Ha, tapi banyak mana duit, banyak tu dah dia dia have been exposed. Okay, because we deal with the naked source. Okay. So, this kind of category that involve in the industry. Okay. So, normally people we take a category 3. Because category 3, the opportunity is very high lah. Eh? Compared to the category 1. Because category 1, not, because we can count eh. Berapa banyak irradiator facility yang ada di Malaysia? Okay. Uh, yang dah sedia ada, campur dengan yang dah ada. Uh, yang nak coming soon, saya tak tahulah. Tapi the latest one is like top glove. Nak dengar top glove? Okay, top glove is the currently lah. Okay, the latest irradiator facility yang yang dah ada kat Malaysia. Okay, sebelum ni kita ada kalau... Sebab because Kelantan ni tak ada facility yang macam ni. Unless kalau dekat hospital. Okay, for brachy lah, for medical. Tapi for industry, kalau you all uh, very familiar with the glove, medical glove. Okay. You tahu macam mana medical glove dibuat. Ataupun macam mana to ensure that the medical glove is acceptable for the medical uh, application. 
Okay, they have been sent to be irradiated. Okay, with certain amount of grey. Okay, to menghapuskan microorganism pada glove tersebut. Itu yang dalam industri lah buat. Okay, and then uh, the category two more to the industry. Okay, industry lah. Even uh, what we call uh, tone razak exchange. Eh? Yeah, every single tu, every single uh, level pun ada kita panggil uh, pematuhan eh, untuk dibuat NDT inspection to ensure the the strongest dia panggil uh, pipe ataupun tiang dia tu eh, to ensure dia yang punya uh, kimpalan dia tu is in a good condition. Okay, next. Okay, bagi yang telah lulus, ah, tak apalah saya go through je lah in case kalau you all berminat because Bila you all have been take or you have been a point for the inter interview section, you akan compete dengan beberapa-beberapa orang lagi. Somehow they open. Somehow they close but they say open. <laughs> nah, itu yang susah tu. Okay, they close tapi they say open. Which is they have their own candidate. Okay, this is what happened outside there. But if let's say you have one opportunity what we what makes you different to another uh what we call you punya competitor lain if let's say you come with the extra rpo this is a value added untuk you lah actually because what because rpo is not stand to the company by right i i start sini stand to the company uh, this is a some cloud tetapi rpo once you uh, certified with the RPO level 3 or level 1, you pegang sampai mati. Because this has been discussed with the one of the officer in ALB. The anything that undergo under exam ataupun you punya criteria, okay, your competency level, government cannot simply take macam tu. Walaupun you ada melakukan 2-3 uh, penalty. Okay, macam Cik, Cik Ney, Cik Ridwan, dia yang lebih maklum kaitan dengan uh, proses what we call RPC ya eh? radiation protection consultant okay radiation protection consultant is one uh, position eh? yang di award by the ALB to the company award the award is award okay dia tak ada exam so that's why dia boleh tarik sekiranya melakukan sebarang kesilapan yang agak berat okay tetapi dia tak boleh tarik you punya RPO Okay, this is what I've been tell by the authority to me lah. Jadi, bila you all have this kind of competency, okay, kita ada senior yang ada certified RPO sebelum ni. Girls, eh? Besh, uh, Madam uh, Aisyah. Okay, dia ada sejil RPO, dia tak pernah pakai. And then, dia pernah tanya, macam mana kita nak uh, guna balik? Adakah dia expired? Yes, I say benda ni expired. Kalau you tak pakai. If you nak pakai, you go to the some courses which is carry out a 15 points. So automatically, you boleh survive. You boleh start balik, you punya service. So means that the RPO is like you nak buat service and then you nak stop 100 tahun ke 2 tahun, 3 tahun, it's up to you. Kalau you nak on balik, go to the refresher course. And then you can have the point you can submit and then you can become the RPO again. Itu policy dia. Okay? Because to be the RPO, some people say it's not easy because we need to deal with the authority, with the people who are care, uh, what we call, who care about the intention of the radiation. Okay? About the population of the safety and security in Malaysia. Okay? Macam you all dah Go through, saya rasa mungkin ada lecturer you all yang dah berkongsi berkaitan dengan uh, kehilangan. Okay? Kehilangan atau misteri radioaktif. Huh? Macam mana barang tu tak boleh dijumpai. Okay? So, this is some kind of uh, incident yang kita nak control. As a RPO, kalau yang uh, deal with the isotope, yes, this is one of the, your responsibility to ensure the safety and the security of the isotope. Okay. Okay, we go to the uh, 
Uh, no. Pass. No, no. Uh, previous one. Okay. So, dia punya question is very easy. Okay. Kat bawah ni saya state kan 40 question with the objective. This one, everybody who takes the RPO exam will go to this kind of mode of uh, paper. Okay. And then you have a 20 question objective on the category level. If you take the category 3, so you will be given the 20 question about the category 3, which is including gauging. Pernah dengar gauging? Nah, huh? Okay, student. Uh, gauging. Uh. Okay, gauging kita akan share. What is means by gauging? Okay. And then, uh, kalau irritator, so you can, akan dapatlah what is the soalan-soalan uh, yang berkaitan dengan irritator. Okay, most likely, uh, how the the safety uh, of the irritator and then somehow this more to the environment punya uh, subject. And then we have another essay. Eh? Okay. There will be a seven question essay. You kena jawab lima. Kalau misalkan seven lah. Dan soalan dia semuanya cepu cemas. Okay. Soalan dia cepu cemas. Sebab dia akan bagi satu more because RPO is not like in that university punya question. Okay. RPO is more to the application. More to the application. What happen? Let's say there is a one sources. Oh no, one source lah. Eh? One source in PPSK. Okay, suddenly they have some fire here. Please, briefly, what is uh, uh, tanggungjawab RPO HUSM? Okay, senang je soalan dia. Dia suara cepu cemas. Dia bagi simple question, tapi you nak fikir berpeluh. Ha? Ha. So, most likely student, kita akan try to adapt with your current situation. Lah. Ha? It's not like you need to memorize. Tak. You need to understand. Okay. Faham berbeza dengan hafal. Kadang-kadang hafal tak faham. Jadi macam saya. Okay. Hafal tak faham. Sebab tu saya nak fahamkan awak saya tak baca selain. Eh, tak ada kat saya ni. Okay. Okay. So and then practical. Last time, during my time, you fail satu, you repeat semua. Ha. Practical is easier way to zaman saya kalau lulus practical tu kira dah 50% you become the next RPO. Tapi kalau you fail, 100% fail. Dia tak tengok dah you punya objective question, essay or whatever tak tengok. But now, thanks God, authority memudahkan you all. You just repeat apa yang you fail. Sebanyak kali pun tak apa. Sebab free. Okay, free. Sampailah tahun ketiga. Ha, dulu saya dua tahun je. Kedekut dia orang. Ha, jadi tahun ketiga ni. Means that by today. After three years. Okay. Your validity of the courses. This course can be used. As your attendance certificate. Okay. In order to have the RPO exam. But after year three. You need to sit down again. Just imagine. You see your friends again in the same course. Okay. Itu yang kita nak elakkan. Eh? Or you see your junior. Eh? So you can say that, oh, I didn't take before this. Before this, just come to get some refresher about what is radiation. Sedangkan you all daripada radiation field. Okay. Okay, next. This is what have been taught by me lah. Okay, by myself about the uh, opportunity ataupun what is the uh, the goods eh? the goods. Okay, we don't want to talk about more what we call the contra because the contra is will be back to your discipline on how to you manage this kind of uh, industry businesses. Okay, what I put here is uh, what do I? Okay. Just now I say the validity. Eh? Okay. The RPO certificate is lifetime. Punya certificate. But the validity is depends to the company. Okay. For example, I give some uh, contoh. You already passed your RPO. This what happened in one of 
my friend's company. Okay, this uh, person have been passed a RPO. Okay, and then she put in the business card RPO. No, RPO is not the RPO certified. RPO adalah lantikan. Okay, lantikan. Then bila you dilantik, baru jadi RPO. Walaupun you adalah RPO certified. Okay, so jangan faham. Selepas habis exam, terus letak kat Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, saya dah jadi RPO. No, RPO is lantikan. Eh? Lantikan. Macam mana dia nak melantik? Based on your uh, kategori 1, 2, 3 punya paper lah. Kalau pas, dapat RPO kan? Kalau tidak, you akan jadi jadi apa? Jadi fed up lah eh. Tak jadi RPO. Carilah mana-mana tempat yang ada RPO. Okay. And then after 5 years. Okay. This is what happen now. Currently in our business. After 5 years you involve any kind of businesses related to the radiation without stop. Okay. Without stop. Nanti tak ada break langsung. 5 years continue. You will be entitled as a consultant. But you must to get in tech with a uh, class H company. Okay. Or you need, you will uh, create a new company. Okay. So this company can give some service. But they have some limitation. Uh. You need at least minimum two with the same category. Before you need to have the RPC punya status. Okay. Fine. That's all. And then, apa yang kita nak highlight dekat sini because what having in our uh, situation currently in this Malaysia currently situation now eh, semua benda naik. Hujan je turun. Kan kena tak turun? Saya tak tahu. Kelantan bila last hujan? Oh semalam. <laughs> tak berasal. Jadi, this is what apa yang berlaku dekat luar sana. Okay. Most of the RPO certificate ataupun RPO certified personnel, you can uh, do some uh, what we call uh, freelance. Okay, freelance. Okay, by having the some scope, you can give some services to the industry. Nanti kita akan kongsikan berapa banyak industri yang ada dekat Malaysia currently based on the data given by the ELB. Okay. Daripada sini, you all tak risau. Tapi tak adalah. You, you jangan fikir by having this RPO certificate, you can become the next Elon Musk. Saya tak ada tak ada. Okay. Ini just to support your prepaid. Okay. Your minyak. Macam tu je. Okay. Okay, next. Ah, okay. Itu sahaja. Saya tak tahu lah. Lebih ke 40 minit ke kat sejam saya tak tahu sebab Mula-mula tadi saya agak nervous sebenarnya Just to share something eh. This is my first time giving talk eh, With the something yang Never given as a uh, Kita panggil as official official. Before this we just throw out everything Okay because in the RPO courses yes, We share all these things eh? Somehow this morning all the butterfly Is come out from my stomach lah Ha, jadi dia pun dah jadi, tambah pula saya tengok saya sifu ada depan sini Saya jadi lagi hewaya Tapi saya tengok uh, brother and sister depan saya Okay ha? Okay good So itu saja. ada question tak? Anything related to how to get the RPO certificate Because the this first topic uh, I'm share about how to get this RPO And then the second one maybe we can discuss more to the uh, the present of the RPO. Okay. And then we see how to look some a lot hole what have in our Malaysia situation now. Okay. Tapi dia ada buat record kan. Saya pun tak pasti saya nak, nak share ke tidak lah. Berhenti share lah. Ha? Oh, itu sebahagian daripada Cik Nik orang lama RPO. Okay. Ada kat WhatsApp kan? Eh? Ya.
<laughs> okay. This is to vocab je lah. Okay. So, side income is more to the SID je lah. Okay, duit tepi. Okay. Side income bukannya duit dekat lapangan. Okay, this. Yeah, last minute because I have, uh, because honestly, okay, frankly speaking, these two weeks is quite tough for me. Actually, we have some uh, uh, slot uh, we need to to give because currently, uh, after the pandemic, okay, uh, when we go into the era pandemic now, uh, eh, sorry, endemic, there are a lot of industry outside there want to use their HRDF claimable. That's why they call for the physical uh, courses, okay, just to get uh, their license is up to date according to the what have been required by the authority. Okay, so sorry, yeah, check it because they only just a uh, few days to complete this slide. Even though this slide also is go to the minimum slide, lah. Okay. Sorry. Are there some Okay. Okay, doctor, can we take the ELB license before we graduate? That maybe during internship or maybe during final year or you must graduate first. Okay, thanks to the question from Siti Uni Sara. Siti Uni Sara. Saya tak boleh baca ke depan ni. Okay, actually syarat, okay, untuk mendapatkan uh, what we call uh, RPO, uh, they have open not only to the degree level. Okay, they have some, dalam Lemtec 44 tu ada state yang diploma pun is capable. Okay, so actually maybe you can take during your end year of your uh, graduate punya time. Okay, this the best thing lah. Because what? Because at least you have been ready for the 70% of the RPO. You need to complete another 30% which is on the exam paper. Okay, because uh, untuk courses tak ada limitation tetapi untuk to be the RPO okay? untuk courses you can have your first year, third, second year, third year, fourth year can go but you need to have this certified attendance uh, apa ni? RPO courses itu yang penting yeah? because kita pun ada juga uh, some university yeah, have do this kind of uh, things Okay, they encourage the final year student uh, to go by their own. Eh? It depends whichever is uh, suitable for you guys. Okay, uh, but for the courses it's okay. But for the exam, when you want to be a become a RPO, because you is actually ready to be a degree uh, level. Okay, and then after this, you will be next the RPO if you pass. Okay. Okay. Don't ask about the degree, even though you are from, we have the experience, okay, because of the lecturer is, what we call, the level of education is very high, I, I can understand that one. So, somehow, it cannot pass this kind of paper. Maybe because of the answer is not like the scheme, schema, schema daripada ELB. Tapi memang ada pengalaman uh, yang pernah diceritakan, Participant daripada university level with the daughter title fail. So, jangan risau. Okay, sebab soalan dia terlampau mudah untuk you all. You all kalau bila fikir too much, dia akan jadi susah. Jangan jadi cepu cemas. Jadikan dia sebagai cepu emas pada you all. Ha? Sebab susah nak dapat. Tapi orang ni. Okay? Any tips? Ada lagi? Uh, terima kasih yang ambil exam. Tapi sebenarnya exam bukan ambil dekat Alif. Exam ambil di Lembaga Pelesenan Tenaga Atom. Tengkil. Okay. Kita tak ambil dekat mana-mana training provider. Sebab authority yang akan sediakan soalan. Okay. Any question from... My brother and sister kat sini. Eh? You all fourth year, okay? a final year, a third year. You at least, uh, uh, kalau tak ada soalan pun tak apa. Cuma saya minta you must be clear what you want to be after this. Okay? Because honestly, eh, there are some university have 
close some uh, this kind of uh, faculty base which is from radiation eh? and then I think one university lah tutup and then another private university dah buka okay which is what they say there are market needs in your capability okay so maybe untuk yang further study is okay fine tak ada masalah tapi how how to deliver your degree level eh, in terms of to get some uh, job scope dekat luar sana eh. okay any question yes ada okay Okay. Okay. Sebab saya dah ada request daripada actually sebenarnya depan-depan ni semua is one of the my former former sifu actually. Okay, especially Dr. Mat and then uh, Cik Ridwan, uh, Cik Ni and Cik Kai and every Cik Asni pun semua yang terlibat dengan medical radiation sebenarnya menjadi sifu saya. Okay. Dr. Mat minta saya share. Okay. Just for your knowledge, apa ni knowledge ya? Eh? Saya saya dekat online tu ada pun tak pernah dengar cerita ni ya. Eh? Baik, saya open lah sebab boh saya minta. Saya grad pada 2006, 2006. After few months, okay? I think before I get the scroll, before I get the scroll, okay? I have been working in one of the organisation. They call it is a for mema. See? Dia dah gelap. Okay? For mema is for what? Siapa tahu for mema apa? Ada duit pula nak bagi. What is for mema? I accept this kat depan. Okay? This is how they create the business. Okay? For all the what we call uh, for uh, foreigner uh, the keywords foreigner foreigner yang datang ke malaysia this is the must they must do the medical checkup the only government ataupun the only uh, sector yang take over this opportunity we call it a formema i dah tak ingat apa tu formema okay tapi one of the things is to monitor this uh, foreigner masa tu kalau you all pernah dengar suso or whatever yes we have experience to see what is the magic interpretation in science. Okay. Kalau you pernah dengar, saya tak tahu ni live pun live lah. Kita letak susuk uh, katanya untuk kekuatan kan. Susuk tu dapat diterjemahkan dengan film X-ray. Kita boleh nampak. Okay. So X-ray dah ada opportunity dekat situ. Tapi saya bukan kerja dekat situ. Okay. Cik Nik je kerja dekat situ. Saya bekerja sebagai data entry. Tahu tak data entry apa? Tahu ah. Eh? Kerja dia bukan duduk atas kursi, susun kotak. Saya nak share ni experience saya. This is the first time that I enter KL. Okay, this is my first time enter KL. Okay. After that, after a few months, so we kita tahu lah. Okay, the environment in KL, masya Allah. Jauh daripada Kelantan. Okay. Nasib baik saya ni. Okay lagi. Jadi after a few months. Huh, I'm working with the Formima. Huh? <laughs> okay lah. Yeah. Nanti sisi terlepas ni. Okay. Nasib baik. Betul ke lah. Because of the one of uh, Cik Ridwan lah at that time. Okay. But time dia dah kerja sebagai radiographer. Saya pun tak tahu macam mana dia dapat title radiographer. Sedangkan masa tu tak accept lagi pun radiographer. And then Cik Ridwan is actually is uh, one of the people lah, okay, uh, yang banyak uh, teach us lah because kita dah sampai KL, kita pun dah macam, bukan tempat kita kan, jadi kita join lah. So after a few months, okay, we stay all together, okay, at the same house, huh? ingatkan dah habis lah dekat USM kan, ada lagi sambung kat luar. Jadi bila kita duduk dekat KL and then Alhamdulillah, uh, the first job that I've been taken in the real medical sector, I'm joining the DSAV. Okay, DSAV is one of the uh, 
Class H license. At that time, dia memang uh, have a good rapport with the sehat. Okay. Masa tu pun, Dr. Mat pun jadi consultant eh, pada salah satu company. Eh. That's why they call Asia Lab. Now Alif lah. <laughs> okay. Banyaklah mengajar kita and then after that a few, I think uh, selepas 6 bulan, 7 bulan saya join dengan DSAV. And then we only learn about the QA saja. Tahu tak QA? Just do that. Like, macam you all buat lah. Major KV, major uh, tengok collimation, major dark room or whatever. By using the old school equipment. Boleh imagine tak? You, you guna old school equipment. Kadang-kadang jadi, kadang-kadang tak jadi. Okay. And after that, bukan kata nak piss off dengan DSAV tak. Get some a good uh, opportunity due to some opportunity ya eh, daripada orang lain. So, there are some vacant in Asia Lab that time. Okay. In Asia Lab, uh, still undergo for the same scope. Okay. By testing, by uh, for irritating apparatus, especially in diagnostic radiology, okay, and awarded for the competency lah for the diagnostic radiology, and then after uh, getting into the Asia Lab, because the policy at that time, all the radiation worker should go the category tiga. By that time, category tiga is for the norm to norm. Pernah dengar norm to norm? Okay, good. So, norm to norm is basically because on that time Asia Lab, dia punya nature business is oil and gas. Okay, dia punya big, big, dia panggil big boy lah. We call it as a big boy. is a oil and gas lah. And then, I have the opportunity eh, to go offshore. Same like Cik Ridwan lah. Okay, Cik ni tak. <laughs> okay, Cik Ridwan. We have the experience. I tak sempat eh. Ah, ya yes, saya panggil. Okay, by the time my batch of ada seorang lah. Okay. So, kita ada opportunity lah. Macam mana naik laut. Tapi sebelum tu, you must go for the, uh, now they call it a boss set lah. Basic, uh, basic safety for uh, yang pernah tengok lah. Heli yang berpusing dalam air tu. Uh, that kind of training. But it's okay. Kalau you join this kind of company ya. Yeah, because what have been uh, stated lah. Uh, All the company, kalau you dah enter, training is one of the must they should do. Okay. Training is the must. Kalau you masuk without any training, you just only have the RPO. Let's say for example, the job scope need a work, radiation worker to go to the uh, offshore. But you don't have the boss set, you don't have the medical check or whatever. It's okay. Company bayar. But because at least you have something rare ataupun what we call uh, something different to another uh, personnel. Okay. So just go because what? Ini yang saya nak share pada you all. Please don't repeat this kind of attitude. Because I have been, I also uh, part of uh, interviewer untuk Alif uh, certain slot. There will be two types of people. This is out of kind of out of the box, huh? The first one is the attitude one. Okay. The second one is the knowledgeable. Okay. Please get the attitude first, because knowledge we can find, but attitude is a habit. Kalau you ada satu habit yang, for example, you cannot, uh, apa ni? You cannot punctual. You always outspoken. It's okay. That's good. Outspoken is good. But you need to see where should you put your outspoken manners to. Okay. You cannot simply, oh, apa ni, boss? Apa? Tak, tak boleh. Okay. So the attitude must become first. Okay. Because knowledge, when you get enter any company or any businesses, bila you dah go through, dia akan hantar you pada training. Tak payah takut. Memang dia akan ada training. Based on the requirement of the company. Ha? Macam saya pun, sebelum saya ada dekat sini, berapa banyak training dah saya pergi. Because this is the requirement. Untuk, uh, they have their, dia panggil, their, their own organization. Okay? Because they slowly will stack up all this, the 
people, the senior, and then slowly akan naik, akan naik, akan naik. So the newcomers akan join. So what want to be with the new, yang the old team ni? So dia akan encourage for the training. So this is how they develop the process. Kalau dia tak develop macam ni, tak ada orang baru masuk. Okay, tak ada orang baru masuk. So jadi itulah pengalaman saya lah. Kalau nak cerita go detail ni banyak lah sebenarnya pengalaman. Cuma we make it short. Saya tak bermula dengan medical radiation punya scope. Saya bermula dengan kerja-kerja kasar. Walaupun saya ni nampak lembut kan, tak kasar. Tapi saya mula dengan kerja tu. Then daripada situ, it uh, get me some intro about the, oh, this is a KL. Okay. At that time, because I'm very, what we call, kita tak pernah. Eh? Honestly, masa tu kita baik eh, dekat Kelantan. Eh? So, bila you go to enter this kind of environment, you join with this kind of community, somehow, kalau you okay, it's okay. But during that my time, we stay all together with the same, they call it fikrah. Huh? The same fikrah. Kita tak, ha, macam tu lah. Sampai orang kata ambil gambar dekat Damai Surah Damai sekarang ni dah ada MRT, saya tak ambil pun. Nak tunjuk comparison tu. Kata tak boleh, saya tak ada gambar lama. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, it is some uh, experience lah that uh, I need to share. And then please, Remember this thing lah, these two things lah, attitude and knowledge. You jangan takut kalau you is like so-so, eh? because knowledge, you belajar semua dalam medical sector. Okay, definitely your lecturers akan berharap you all sepatutnya perfect, successful lah. Eh? Tapi when you get into the business, okay, the, out, the world outside, okay, The attitude is come first. Okay? The attitude. Because knowledge is actually there. Kalau dia minta you join company maintenance, you tak ada basic maintenance sebenarnya. You hanya ada basic radiation. How to synchronize with the maintenance punya SOP checklist? They will send you for the training. But they must have a good workers. This good worker correlate to the attitude. Okay, this is what I've learned lah that I want to share with my brother and sister. Okay, the attitude. Okay, even though I'm not too attitude, but I encourage you all to have this kind of this two. Tak banyak. Yang mana tadi saya cakap tu tak ingat pun tak apa. Ingat dua ni je. Okay, even though in online ke, yes, I share this one. For attitude, attitude, attitude. Okay, yeah. Ada soalan? Yang mana yang ni eh? Yang ni dulu. Oh. Ha. Dia ambil RPU dan dulu tapi belum dapat kerja dengan syarikat kelas A. Berapa lama RPU certification itu akan valid? Okay. Saya akan jawab yang daripada Izuan Razmi. Okay. Untuk validity RPU yang telah lulus tapi belum dapat kerja. You punya certification macam tadi saya sebut is lifetime. Kalau dah mati sekalipun, it's okay, fine. Tetapi, once you want to get your RPO certificate active, please look to the training provider yang buat refresher course. At least, you must have minimum 15 points. Equivalent to one year validity. And then after that, baru you boleh buat continuous. You jangan mimpi, refresh terus dapat 3 tahun tak? Refresh. 15 point 1 year. Okay. Tetapi untuk yang dah pass and then lulus dan mengguna pakai sijil RPO dalam tempoh setahun. Dalam tempoh setahun you have been entitled for 3 years RPO certificate uh, RPO company validity 3 tahun. Okay. So, jadi pada yang dah expire ataupun yang ada RPO uh, certificate tapi tak guna, you boleh guna. Tetapi, you kena pergi refresh untuk dapatkan 15 point. 15 point for one year, maximum 45 point for three years, up to 45 point. Sebab dia hanya boleh carry out another extra 10 point saja. Okay, lebih burn. 
Tuh ya lah. Okey, soalan yang seterusnya, dia kata is it worse to have the RPO kalau saya deal with the lab eh? Okey. We need to understand what is the RPO need. Based on the Akta 304 pada tahun 1984 menggariskan setiap pemegang lesen. Who is the pemegang lesen? Orang yang bertanggungjawab lah. Yang mengandungi syarikat yang mengendalikan bahan-bahan radiation. Circular elementum ni. Kalau industri atau universiti tak ada pun alat-alat yang berkaitan. Okay. So no need to take lah. Okay. But RPO is a compulsory for those who have the activity. Ha, nanti kita akan semak. Because mungkin final year tak saya tak tahu. Dah belajar ke belum? Class, class, lesson activity. So any government, uh, any private sector atau government sector yang menggunakan okay, this kind of class A sampai class H, you must to have RPO. Okay. Even though G2G pun sekarang dia dah enforce. Huh? Enforce. We have a custom, we have a parliament. Huh? Sebelum ni pun dia macam uh, orang kata because of G2G, eh? government to government. But they also must have the license. Okay. Pernah tengok kan? Scanner. Ni mesti ni. Adik-adik ah. atau brother sister kat depan ni yang kerap sangat naik flight. Pernah tak persoal? Is it safe? your things in the luggage system, luggage scanner. You jalan tepi tu, safe atau tidak? Ha? Macam mana you tahu safe, you tak ada survey meter. Satu je lah kan? Okay. Tapi kita nak bagi tahu, any single entity yang menggunakan alat penyinaran. Okay. Kalau kita go to the act of work, alat penyinaran ni benda lain. Tetapi uh, I want to share yang it, uh, what we call radiation. Ionizing radiation, you must have di pemegang lesen yang you must have the PPF pegawai pengesinaran RPO okey sorry oh hasan okey saya dapat soalan ah uh, untuk daripada cik hasan macam mana dia nak jadi konsultan okey sebenarnya konsultan ni dia kena tagging dengan company yang berurusan dengan kelas H okey You all belajar kelas A, B sampai H. Eh? Di dalam uh, sistem ALB, H ni banyak. Okay. Kelas juru perunding, makmal OSL, uh, menyediakan uh, himat latihan. Okay. So this kind of H is very uh, what we call general. Okay. General dan kalau untuk jadi konsultan, syarat dia minimum 5 tahun berurusan dalam uh, aktiviti radiation tanpa stop. Okay. And then you akan submit application to be a uh, radiation protection consultant with the company. You cannot be standalone. Okay. RPC tak boleh standalone. They must come, they must tag with the company. Okay. Radiation is everywhere. Saya pun dah rasa macam terirradiate di lama-lama. Okay, ha, Jeff, katakan. Okay. Untuk ambil exam, normally kita akan um, katalah you all dah pergi ke satu uh, training provider. Okay. This training provider akan menguruskan ada yang menguruskan sijil tuan-tuan, dia akan upload di dalam, uh, dia panggil sistem e-lesson untuk pekerja. Okay. Dan daripada situ, you all need to do everything online. Okay. You request exam online. Okay. Daripada situ, you akan tahu slot-slot mana yang free. Okay. But now, they limit to one slot 10%. You punya question is not on paper. Question you is on PC. So, so this is what have been taught by, by one of my colleagues. So you akan duduk dalam bilik mungkin half of this hall and then 
Ada 10 orang Soalan ada di dalam PC Nasib you all lah Tapi dia dah decide lah Which PC yang you supposed to go to sit Kategori 1, kategori 3 It's up to you So jangan salah duduk So online So register online So please Kalau nak senang Cari training provider yang boleh menguruskan untuk exam Maksudnya dia akan tolong you Untuk upload certificate Because Kadang-kadang bila masuk sistem online ni uh, Some people have nervous Takut sesalah tekan, delete Dia kata dia dah tak valid Okay Tapi it's okay Tapi benda ni memang di uh, Apply with the online Punya mode lah You tak ada minta masuk dalam sistem uh, ALB dekat dengkil Hantar surat tak Okay, this is true, everything through online Dan semuanya boleh dilihat dalam Lamtech 44 Sampai dah 5 Okay, set Okay So dalam tu dia ada state kan lah Okay ha, Ini yang menjadi kelebihan uh, industri Apa yang exam semuanya disebut Okay, soalan berapa soalan And then uh, validity of the exam Ha, semua tu ada di spell out dalam Lentek You all boleh free download Okay Ada dua lagi soalan <laughs> Okay, thank you ah. Ha. Yang bertanya Cik Safwan ah. Ha. Jadi dia ada limitation Okay, for currently is uh, Three company Okay, three company you can give your service Okay, tak boleh lebih Minimum boleh Tapi kategori, company tu perlulah Mempunyai the same category dengan Your RPO certified Kalau RPO you level 1 You jangan ingat Oh because I level 1 I can give my service to level 3 No Level 1 is level 1 Level 3 is level 3 Okay uh, But the training provider The capability to give Yes, we give the overall But we need to Tambah Bidang Okay, tambah bidang Especially for the Irradiator punya part Okay Tambahan untuk jadi radiation Ataupun RPO medical Yes Kita masih belum dapat confirmation eh? Who is eligible to give the Training To be the training provider Maybe USM boleh apply This one of the op option lah For medical Okay Because you have the facility You have the radiology Nuclear medicine and you have the radiotherapy This is somehow the gov uh, Orang kata apa? On the PKRP line Okay, because keliling dah keluar Syllabus dah ada Syllabus dah ada uh, So nanti kita tengok lah macam mana Because until uh, last few days uh, There is no single entity yang come out with the Certified trainer provider for RPO medical Okay dia sama info lah Ni kalau tanya ni tak berhenti dia orang tanya Stop lah Okay lagi? Ada lagi? Sebab limit saya Sikit lagi Tak tahulah <laughs> Nampaknya dia orang memang tengok lah Okay thanks So dia minta tanya syllabus ha? Syllabus yang Farhana. Oh, so okay, I can I know whether it is really crucial or not for me to want to is able to have the RPO license to make a qualify in that thing. For real yeah, the other. Okay. Okay, so alan dia perlu atau tidak you become the RPO. Betul eh? Kan? So alan dia kan? The question is belongs to you. Kalau you tahu, you buat market study Okay, for example lah Record eh? Okay Sebab saya takut bila saya bercakap ni ada certain-certain yang Yang disalah erti, yang tu saya tak nak Sebab tu bila dia kata benda ni record Saya dah risau Saya takut nanti, hari tu cik nanti cakap macam mana? Kan? Okay Jadi, untuk makluman perlu atau tidak RPO kepada you all is belongs to you. Okay. Apa yang saya tahu from degree level medical radiation your opportunity is not uh, competitive compared to the master student. This is what I'm understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. 
most of the medical center for the physicists i never heard that the candidate is come from the degree level yeah they from the master students okay if i've been told also that the radiographer pun uh, you are not uh, able to be kota uh, silap okay correct me if wrong so this is one of the opportunity sebenarnya banyak opportunity kat luar if let's say you want to okay i'm stuck here i want to be a uh, the way we call the competency person competency competency person ni siapa orang yang collect all the cj cj yang berguna dekat luar ha contoh sso green book tu satulah yang banyak orang tahu kan ha leak tester and the radiation leak tester leak tester also is one of the rpo punya kompetensi yang mana is a lifetime punya kompetensi okay and then you want to be what is up to you sebenarnya so sebab bila you pergi interview for example ah selalunya kita, saya selalu meletakkan satu uh, example yang mana kalau ada 10 orang yang datang interview with the same degree level with you doesn't matter the good attitude good knowledgeable or whatever it is capable ke macam mana ikut dia but you the only one have the RPO which is value to the company what do you think company takkan hire the personnel untuk pergi buat lagi 10 hari because they will waste some time and some money untuk hantar they already have the ready made but the only way the re this ready made is less of knowledgeable so dia bagi training this is one of the opportunity yang saya nampak uh, the good advantage untuk uh, our scope unless after this we discuss and then we try okay to get aligned with the health sector requirement okay fine this is what or what we call the side income for you lah eh? nanti kita akan tengok is it necessary because we need to know what is the market okay what is the market of radiation protection officer okay kalau you all talk about kelantan there are only one company okay yang menggunakan machine x-ray okay which is rawaco Okay, Rawako is one of the industry yang di Kelantan saja. That's why dalam ni, kalau you nak looking for the RPO position, you need to terminate Cik Nick dulu lah. Okay, because he is the RPO for hospital. Uh, yes, jadi dua. Okay, good. Okay, BPSP. PSK. Okay. Betul. Betul. Senang kan? Ha. Amali saya, betul. Masa tu. Hmm. Berbeza. Ha, si? Ha. <laughs> okay. Lebih dua tahun. Hmm. Dan baru lulus. Hmm. <laughs> Tu, cerita dia side income tu. Shimazu. Eh, mesin Samsung. Samsung. Ya, 
Ha, itu satu lah, nasib tu lah kan ha. yeah. Big company now, selain engineering experience at income. Yeah. 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 Itu sebahagian daripada experience orang dan sebenarnya memang that's why saya sebut tadi there is some a lot hole. Okay, kita tak hafi dan mungkin after this I will discuss with the moderator lah. Okay, which slot yang dia akan off on yang kita tak tahu. Tapi sebenarnya this is some of your opportunity. Okay. Because we see. Because what? The RPO is a needed. Must. Okay. Because what? You ada akta. Akta dah bagi tahu. Siapa nak langgar akta? Kan? Bila akta bagi tahu, itu adalah sumber pekerjaan you. So this one of the option lah. Okay. Yes, saya. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Baik. Tunggu yang lesen. Baik. Ah, baik. Saya faham. Saya cuba explain lah. Saya ni bukan pekerja ALB sebenarnya. Tapi soalan tanya tu more to the authority. Baik. Tapi based on the training that we share to the uh, participant, uh, audience. Okay. Untuk sesuatu syarikat, baik. Ini yang berlaku di dalam uh, kita punya the real situation. Eh. RPO is only one position. RPO is only one position. But you can have RPS. Radiation Protection Supervisor. Dalam mana-mana syarikat, you jangan gaduh. Even though Alif, kita ada 48 RPO. But this 48 RPO, they have dia dia panggil job scope. You nak pergi naik laut, this is one requirement. Because we deal with the norm to norm activity. So the requirement by the operator, okay, RPO. The requirement is RPO. Okay, so that's why kita ada ramai. Tetapi we only have one RPO. The rest is the RPS. Okay, so same goes to the question. Kalau kata USM, okay, dia ada beberapa lesen, for example. Katalah, diletakkan di bawah tiga lesen. Eh, tiga lesen. So, tiga lesen sepatutnya, dia hanya ada tiga RPO lah. Setiap satu lesen tu akan ada satu RPO. Okay, jadi itu, uh, orang kata apa, bahasa mudah. Eh, untuk faham. Uh, kalau you all memang confirm, you all ada family, you have, dia panggil, apa ni, MP fund. Eh, you ada MP fund. Mama, Papa. Okay. Okay. Tak ada masalah. You can go, do everything. You can become a CEO. What kind of holding kat luar tu. Tapi, kalau you bercakap tentang how to survive your family. Okay. Most of us. Even myself. Okay. B40. Okay. Macam mana kita nak tolong family kita. So, this kind of the option yang kita buka dekat you lah. Because, as I say, dunia sungguh kejam di luar sana. Tapi, Macam mana kita nak alter to become friendly to us. Okay? Jangan kita do. Kita panggil, we put everything negative to the industry. Huh? Because what? Because we not ever single thing yang kita understand about the industry. So hopefully, remember, attitude, attitude, attitude. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, another one question. Just untuk uh, clarify dengan Arifa. Okay. Berkenaan USM punya RPO. Okay. Okay, actually dalam untuk kita universiti, kita ada satu sahaja lesen. Okay. Iaitu universiti saya Malaysia, dia punya pemegang lesen servisi. Okay. Okay. Jadi untuk hal-hal melibatkan sinaran di bawah USM, tanggungjawab adalah di bawah UKKP. Okay. Unit Keselamatan Kesihatan Pekerjaan di Penang. Okay. Okay. Dan, jadi pihak UKKP dari RPO sendirilah. Hmm. Kalau dulu kita, kalau kenal Encik Zaib lah, pegawai ketua-ketua saya dulu, dia punya RPO kat sana. 
Kemudian dibantu oleh beberapa orang pegawai sains yang ada kelayakan RPO juga okay, di, okay. Di, di di pelbagai kampus. Okay. Pinang ada seorang, IPPT ada seorang, kejuruteraan okay. seorang dan kesihatan seorang. So ada empat orang RPS. Okay. Yang itu saya boleh maklumkan lah untuk USM. Hmm. Berbanding dengan hospital, walaupun kita di bawah atas 304, Betul. tapi kita ada banyak pecah lesen. Okay? Pecah lesen kita ada kat, kat kampus kesihatan ada lima lesen. Hmm. Radiologi, dental, dental. radioterapi, hmm. nuclear medicine and blood irradiator. Oh, blood irradiator. Kita ada lima lesen, lima lesen eh, untuk kampus kesihatan. Dan kesemua, kesemua RPO... Uh, Uh, di bawah Betul, kebutuhan tempat lesen. berlainan lah. Betul. Uh, okay. uh, dan uh, kalau di IPB tu saya rasa ada, mungkin ada beberapa lesen ke sana juga. Eh, untuk clarify, untuk clarify lah. Jadi untuk mudah faham, satu lesen, satu RPO. OBTL boleh jadi dua atau tiga orang yang sama. Tapi RPO must be one lesen. Okay, thank you.
maybe you go to the uh, like say macam satu kursus dia kau study ya ha? training special untuk go to the offshore okay so dekat offshore memang ada kehadiran norm to norm so based on the act 304 untuk dealing with the norm to norm we need expert so who are the expert radiation worker are not totally gazetted sebagai expert the pps pegawai perlindungan sinaran because you deal with the radioactive material which decay 24/7 without stop kalau you jumpa radioactive yang tinggi how you need to do how to make people safe how to make people um what we call protect from the internal hazard because you deal with the contamination you tak deal dengan external exposure you deal dengan contamination so suit angkasawan is one of the things ataupun kalau tak nak tahap tu you need to control ataupun barricade that kind of area okay so this kind of the norm we have onshore and offshore both okay cari refinery dekat Kertih eh so every time they do the cleaning the vessel RPO will be put tapi ini based on the company punya negotiation lah eh? tapi kita nak bagi tahu dekat you whoever do this job this a capability of the RPO okay next Okay, so we have another one is a <coughs> safety, radiation, uh, safety and security. Okay, this one is more dealing with the isotope onshore base. Okay, we are not dealing with the norm uh, oil and gas. This one is including the leak test. Okay, leak test is something yang tak perlukan RPO. Tetapi, it's a good you to understand because the Leak test is actually one of the syllabus that will be included in the RPO. Okay. And then we also do the transportation. So transportation, seperti yang diterjemahkan, di, di anything related to the radiation. Hanya orang yang berwibawa. Just the spell lah. Dalam atas berwibawa. Who is the wibawa? Again, TPS. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, next, uh, next. Okay, so this kind of activity, okay, including lab. Lab is not uh, what we call compulsory to have the RPO, okay, because uh, lab kan yang kita masukkan dalam tu adalah lab OSL, just measurement lab, okay, just a radiation worker, okay. And then we have the training, uh, is general lah, training what kind anything, kalau kat state. And then we have the medical radiation services. Ah, uh, ini yang related dengan you all. But please put on your mind, how many companies that do the QA today? We have eight. Tapi, you kena tengok macam mana market dekat Malaysia ni. Because company cannot appoint you to do the QA tester if there is no uh, what we call some businesses increase because they need to pay you unless we are from the government side okay so please not to put QA is your priority because a lot of team outside there most likely uh, they need to do some study lah okay on the QA but you can have the competency and then uh, try to to tag with the other classes license okay and then uh, okay in medical radiation okay especially which are related to our scope okay not only do the QA okay you can also enter the gawai sign KKM but I'm not sure uh, when is the latest intake that they taken us as a uh, staff Ada tak data tu? Tahun terkini yang dia last start uh, 2019 okay, which is before COVID So how many people? Ada tak data? 
tak ramai because you have bila Dr. Kai bagi tahu tak ramai bukan maksudnya position tu tak cukup okay because we actually on development lah sekarang ni dekat Kedah akan dinaikkan taraf satu lagi pusat kanser okay pusat kanser di uh, Sungai Petani takkan tak ada post which is this is not about the post this is about your competition with other university uh, this is something yang uh, magic sebenarnya uh, hopefully uh, if let's say they are transparent in this kind of selection insyaallah you will be the part lah of the team but somehow kita tak tak nafi and then kita tak tahu macam mana pengambilan staff because ini di government side eh? tapi kita nak bagi tahu opportunity is there okay or otherwise you can go to the private sector to join to be like a uh, tutor okay or lecturer lecturer also now they need master or phd kan okay uh, zaman saya master tu kira uh, okay lah boleh masuk lepas tu dia okay we send you to the phd level uh, tapi saya master pun tak dapat phd lagi tak dapat uh, okay uh, jadi So thanks. So maksudnya sekarang ni your time is very strong. Okay. You punya competition is very tight sebenarnya. So don't play fool lah during your your study time. Because your pointer doesn't mean you have the seat. Uh, this is what we call rezeki. Okay. You don't never thought I'm be for flat all the years. But who knows. Uh, okay. Okay, next. Okay, this is the activity ya, yang memerlukan lesen daripada ILB. Saya tak nak ajar the class A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Uh, tapi kita tak ada dua kelas lah. Yang ada dua kelas A, uh, B dan F is uh, MNA, Malaysian Nuclear Agency because of the nuclear power. But the, the rest is only A, B, uh, A, C, D, E, F, Okay, so anything related, which is, kalau you kata you deal with the radiation, okay, they will see what types of class that radiation involve to your scope. If that say sales, what type of sales, irradiating apparatus, you go to the class C. If you sales for the isotope, you go to the class A. Okay. Ini soalan RPO. Takkan you tak ingat kan? Ni dah diajar kan? Oh, boleh lah diajar dalam you punya syllabus. Okay? So, this is the activity. Okay, instead of like you know what types of activity macam penyinaran, tolok, gauging, training. So, this is the activity license. Okay? Based on the types of hazardous lah. Kalau isotop, all the range of isotop will be put under class A. And then, Uh, next slide. Okay. The class H. Anything yang tak termasuk di atas. Uh, yang mana tak dispel out kan pada kelas A sampai G. Semuanya dimasukkan ke dalam kelas H. Jadi anything like macam training, uh, calibration dosmeter, juru perunding. Semuanya diletakkan di bawah kelas H. Okay. So, this kind of activity is actually can be stated. Okay. More than one for each company. Dia tak limit. Macam tadi RPO limit for one company, one RPO. But for one company, you can have all this kind of class license. Because you deal with the many types of activity. Okay. Starting from the... Uh, kecil-kecil sampailah yang besar-besar. Okay. The next. Okay. This is list of company yang for me uh, is a opportunity to you. You can search out. Ini yang saya dapat tulis lah. And maybe lepas ni Cik Nik atau Cik Ridwan ada lagi company kelas H yang berlesen di bawah lembaga pelesenan tenaga atom. Okay. Yang mampu untuk memberi peluang kepada uh, what we call the RPO scope. Okay. Macam yang kita state, Alif lah. Uh, Alif because of my 
because uh, the company that I'm working now. And then we have Malaysia Nuclear Agency. Okay, actually our activity is similar to the MNA, but MNA is a, a huge punya uh, industry lah. They have their own uh, team, and then they have their own the facility to create all the instrument. But we from the private sector, I can say that we have uh, all this kind of license except for the B and F for the nuclear fission punya activity. And then we have a Bangiri. Uh, this is one of the selected uh, company for those who want to do the RPO side income. Okay, uh, they they will hire based on the demand because now nowadays there will new company. Okay, every year they have the new company registered, uh, but they never know what is the policy, what is the um, what we call the syarat-syarat pematuhan lesen. Okay, jadi kebanyakannya dia akan datang kepada pihak ALB dan ALB akan memberikan sebahagian senarai untuk rujukan. Okay, sebab itulah kalau kita tengok is actually just to share. After the COVID situation, people now look to the medical sector. See, what happened during the COVID? Industry goes down. But what is goes up? Medical sector. How they promote? Simple one, glove. Okay. How they promote the oxygen? Something like macam to enrich eh? the oxygen kan? Uh, so all the medical sector. So please, you just see how the, the operation in Malaysia now, where is the loophole? Try to be aligned because you can be in the medical sector, but you also can be the same time in the industry. Okay. So another one is a uh, radiasi alam and then RPO course after C. So only three have provide the RPO training. Okay. You cannot demand. Uh, saya nak buat RPO untuk lima hari. No, because the we need to to have some slot with the ALB, and then the ALB slot is a uh, compulsory for you to get the seventy uh, percent punya attendance certified lah. Uh, kalau you tak datang, dia datang ALB pun tak boleh juga. But ALB is penting. But you need to know akta. Uh, maybe. We can have some uh, and this talk again, but maybe need to invite this might what my option lah. Eh? Invite the authority to see what is the currently the real situation. Eh? Uh, maybe after this lah, okay. And then uh, uh, that's all for for me because I also have been given about thirty five minutes. And the next, I think, any question? Ah, eh? uh, coffee break? No, actually, this supposed to be the first one. Okay, this is supposed to be the first one. But because of when they ask me, Cik Andy, uh, 45 minutes. Oh, I kata susah. I punya slide ni, berapa, berapa slide je ni? Ada nak boleh fit dengan your time. So that's why I bring the RPO punya uh, slide yang panjang for your info. Because 45 minutes uh, as a human being, your focus is only at that time, 45 minutes. The rest is belongs to your friend. They try to take you, oh, cok, 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 cok. okay? Because this is the human. I accept that one. That's why we try to complete the first one, 45 minutes, and then this one is more to your uh, understanding the culture or businesses on the RPO uh, scope. Okay? Any question? So I have the RPT. Okay, Cik Arifuddin, terima kasih kerana soalan. So, yang ni kita bincang di luar kota. Huh? Sebab they, they ask for the quotation actually. <laughs> okay. But this one is need to deal with the, some uh, industry yang mana to fit with the DK tank. Okay, DK tank tahu lah apa dia? Tahu? Where they use the DK tank? Huh? Nuclear medicine. Okay, they can thank they use a nuclear medicine because they need to hold everything for a certain time after they let 
all this waste to the normal sewage system. Okay. I think that's all. Thank you, Arifuddin, for the brief for the question. Tak ada suara. Ah, uh, okay, dah ada dah kan? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, any question from brother and sisters? Hey, please. You all want to to give a service after this, huh? Ah, come on. Don't drop your senior water face here. <laughs> huh? Please, come. One question. Ah, okay, good. Just no, no. No, okay, no. Okay. Hello. Okay, good. Ah, yes. Okay. Go on. Encik, saya soalan. Okay. Uh, is there any gender bias? Gender bias? Yes, as RPO. RPO. In industry nowadays. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the critical question. When people ask about the gender, huh? the gender. Because when we, de we are dealing with the radiation, okay, if we give some experience, huh? we never put a gender bias in the Oh, my current company. Okay, we take girls, we take boys, but not the 50-50 one. Okay? Please, pre-origin. Because if you are working with the sales or something that need to the communication people, yes, you can have both. But in technical, normally, we prefer both. Because for, for example, for QA, QA, some limitation. We need girls to enter the mammography room to do, to be expert in the mammography testing. For example, takkan you nak bagi semua lelaki expert dalam memo. So we supposed to give the opportunity. This is about the QA testing lah. Okay. But at the industrial base, normally, Tak ada gender, uh, tak ada bias. Cuma certain company mungkin sebab based on the, they call it a business revenue. Because once you get pregnant, you have leave. Uh, on annual leave, emergency leave, whatever leave. So probability, the, the system actually. If the company say the gender bias is there, so there are something wrong with the org chart. Because the the true or the best of chart is the system can run even the single personnel got enter to the company. We are not people people say punya company, bukan? Kalau people say my company, yes, you buat semua, you buat semua, you claim semua. Susah hendo. Okay, so if the question is gender bias, we can say yes, they have, but. Uh, from my side, we are not the kind of gender bias huh? based on the business punya environment. Okay, we have an OSL, almost girls, ah, right? gender bias macam mana kan? Ah. So, we, but on the technical side, okay, that need you to be outstation for one week. Okay, there are the commitment, there is some commitment that you need to put somehow we need to discuss on that thing. But either you willing to be put in this kind of situation. Okay? Next. What is the position that managing program training services? What is the position? Uh, ni soalan cepu cemas sebenarnya. Okay? Saya tak tahu saya menjawab ke tidak soalan dia for training service. If you want to be a training provider, okay. If you want to be a training provider, if I not mistaken, there is no such um, compulsory that you from the uh, radiation fee to give the training provider. But you must to follow a certain certain limit. Let's say to invite the RPO. You must have the trainer is uh, certified trainer. Okay. There are two 
uh, interpretation on certified trainer. One certified trainer based on your experience purposes. Another one is exper uh, not experience based on the claimable HRDF certified you as a trainer. Okay, so based nowadays the ELB they take the first one the experience, but they put also for the HRDF because some of the participant will uh, do some uh, claimable lah, claimable to the HRDF. Okay, so am I the right? So kalau ditanya position, itu je lah yang saya boleh uh, explain on the training. Okay, ada lagi? Okay, next. Yeah. Okay, use your mic. It's okay. Cakap perlahan pun dengar kuat. Encik, okay. Jauh tu. Okay, thank you. Soalan dia bagus. Sebab dia nak menentukan hala tuju. Okay. Uh, this one is more to the general topic. Eh? Adakah saya confirm dapat kerja? Yes, I understand because of the current situation. You all mungkin tak rasa ayam naik. Eh? You all tak rasa minyak masak naik lagi. Because you all beli semua kat kedai. Okay. Isu dapat kerja, tak dapat kerja is not my job. Your job is to convince where is the market. Kalau you nak involve in the radiation, you must ready to get enter the radiation field. For example, uh, one opportunity, if you can come with the RPO, yes, some company will take, okay, we take this because he actually passed one of the KPI. Dia dah ada satu keperluan yang kita nak. Okay, take ambil dia. Kalau you tak ada, let's say you tak ada. So you need to convince. What else can make you a very valuable compared to the others based on the requirement by company? For example, do some market study. Market study ni bila kita cakap berkaitan dengan business. But you are the supply chain. You are the supply chain. Okay? You akan tahu dekat mana demand. Dekat mana yang nak you dekat situ. Kalau you nak involve Okay, in trading, for example. Okay, you go for the trading line. Kalau you nak involve in a, what we call entrepreneur. Okay, nowadays people on young age like you likes to be an entrepreneur. Good, but please don't like 50-50. After a few years and then suddenly stop, do the benda lain. Bila uh, buat benda lain, you need to have start again. Okay, so to answer the question, please look at your market. Kalau you nak go for the medical physicist, you know, medical physicist, you must have a master student and master uh, certif certification. But you come with a degree. Is it the market niche? No. You just Dia panggil uh, try and error, which is you grab the experience on the interview session only. Okay, kalau you nak do some market study, okay, you nak pergi ke mana? If you want to be a RPO on oil and gas, for example, look for the opportunity. You must know that oil and gas is at the East Coast punya line, at the Kemaman, Kertih. Cari, buat study on the internet. Maybe some of your lecturer can help you. And I think um, my responsible juga because have been appointed as a industrial punya team. So we try to try to give some uh, updates ataupun info. Where should you go? Kalau you ada soalan daripada situ lah. Kalau you say saya nak jadi pegawai sign. Uh, so pegawai sign government, you need to to fight. Okay, macam baru ni uh, dikongsikan lah uh, untuk position dalam government yang memohon uh, 1,300 untuk position pegawai uh, pegawai sign di bawah satu jabatan uh, kesihatan. Eh, jabatan kesihatan bukan? Uh, jabatan lah, uh, saya tak nak disclose dekat sini. 
Jadi pada 1300 after filtration they have a 45 caliber candidate but the position is only 5. Nampak tak macam mana susahnya? Because sekarang ni budak-budak dah pandai. Eh? Ha. So your challenge is very tough now. So please try to create something yang uh, rare but align with your nature. Okay? Okay? Then uh, okay, dah jawab. Okay, tak ada question? Tak apa, tanya. Out of the box pun boleh. Tak ada masalah. Sebab sesi ni saya tak rasa saya seorang je akan bercakap lepas ni. Mungkin lepas ni ada orang lain lagi akan datang. Okay. So kalau tak ada, saya serahkan balik kepada eh? kepada uh, model tu. Eh? Ada. Okay. Okay, thank you for your patience. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Renadi. I hope everyone is satisfied with the answer given by Mr. Renadi. If you have any queries later, please contact Madam Aisha, our Medical Committee for clarifications.